Toy Cults. Today we're going to mask around the designs that we masked around on the computer the other day. First step was to set the points as you go along the quilt. First point is going to be right there and then we're masking around this particular embroidery. It's a little tricky, especially trying to do with one arm. The belts tend to grip a little bit. There's an X and a Y axis belt on here and it tends to uh, keep it a little stiff. So you keep going and then you would press set on the frame of the machine every time you get to the point that you want. You set it and then you would do the same thing every single point. So we're going to basically go around this design and set all these points. Basically I want to get right around to the edge of that and right down to the bottom. So that is where I need to be on this particular quilt. Go over to the computer screen and check and make sure that the area that it's going to take out is the area that you want. You can preview it and when you get what you like you click the check mark and it will set that one. So the next thing that we're going to do is proceed along the quilt to the second embroidery. Repeat the process. You set every point along the way. <laughs> it's in the right spot before you set it. Up, around. and over, in, and down. And as I mentioned before, I'm going to be going around this later with the stitch regulators. So basically what we're trying to do is just get the design as it sits, not to run into the embroidery. So we're going to press OK on that, and that's going to set that design right where we've masked it. So the next thing that we're going to do is to have the machine start to stitch it out. What I'm doing now is loading the design as we've masked it. There are four embroideries along here, but we're just going to show you two because that gives you the, the picture. We're going to start at the start point. So the computer is now going to move the machine over to where the start point would be. We're going to pull up the bobbin thread and then let it stitch. Masking is really handy when you have an embroidery or something that's unusual on the quilt and you can't really do it on the screen you need to do it on the actual quilt top. So that's why we're using the sew head to do this. It's going to start stitching a little bit out of the frame because that's where the beginning of the row is. Or not. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. The other thing that it can do when you mask is it will move your start and stop points anywhere it feels like it's the best place for them to connect. So sometimes it's a bit of a surprise where it starts and stops. Okay. Pull up that bobbin thread to get it out of your way and then press start and the machine is going to take off and go in its design path. We don't come too close to the design. And something like this, I want to leave a little bit of space. I really don't want to have to pick stitching out of embroidery. I'll leave it a little bit of space. This particular quilt was uh, made by Martha Weems. She adapted a pattern to uh, fit the embroideries that she had done on her machine. These are um, OESD designs called floral etchings. So she um, did the embroideries with blue polishing thread and then made up a quilt to match them, which is pretty darn clever. And of course, when she wanted a quilt, she didn't want us to stitch through the embroideries, so that is what we're doing. Masking program is interesting. When you're doing any kind of modifications to your quilt before it goes on the frame or as before you quilt it rather, you need to do the masking last because anything else that you do like resizing or 
changing where it sits on the frame or anything like that is going to um, affect the masking. It needs to be the very last thing that you do before you start to stitch. Often what I'll do too, and I have done it in this case, is to avoid all the tiny little jumps and stops and thread tails, I'll take it back into the Art & Stitch software, back to artwork, remove some stitches, uh, reshape, go into reshape objects, reshape some of the nodes, join some things to others, delete some of the points because you really will have way too many uh, little points, and then uh, smooth the line and kind of fix the, the image because the computer doesn't really know how to do it, it just knows how to connect objects. So what it'll do if your stitches are a quarter inch apart, it will just do a straight line in between them. In this case, that's not really a big deal because it, the cloaking around it is a little bit squared off because we are going to go around those embroideries. We could also program it to mask an outline, which is a little more detailed. We can set small, medium, or large stitches, large being normal, I think 2 or 2.5, um, to stitch directly around the embroideries, which we don't really want to do on this one. I'd rather have that hand control put it on the frame and, and really get in there with my stitch regulator and see what I'm doing. We're just letting the stitch. So now we're coming up to the second one that we masked. We've got the machine on about three quarter speed. We don't like to go too much faster than that. It's all about the process. about the Q24 is you have about 16 inches of workable space. I had a Q20 before where I had about 12 inches, so it makes a bit of a difference. This pattern is about 10, but it's nice to have that extra flexibility when you've got your larger motifs. And this is a bit of a larger one. So it's going to continue along its path. It's going to do the top row first, and then it's going to come back and stitch over the last embroidery, or the second embroidery on this row, because we can only pretty much fit two in a frame if you want to see what's going on. So it's going to continue on its path, masking around the other embroideries, and when it's finished, we will move on to the next row, mask it again, after we size everything, take it into the software, do our modifications, and bring it back. And that's it for this video.